check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? Let's review. By determining the limit of 3 f of x plus the square root of g of x as x approaches negative 1. Now we're not given what f of x and g of x are, but we're given their limits as x approaches negative 1. Now if we look at this, we can see that if this part of the expression is going to get closer and closer to some value, and this part is as well, then we can really just split this up and do them separately and then add the results. So let's rewrite this, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 3 f of x plus the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the square root of g of x. Now we can take this one step further. If this 3 is just a constant being multiplied by f of x, then really we could move the limit inside that and find out where f of x is going as we approach negative 1 and then multiply that result by 3. So really it would look like this. And the same thing applies to this. If g of x is going to get closer and closer to something, then we can just take the square root of that result after. So we'll slip the limit as x approaches negative 1 inside the radical. And now we can see where we can use this information we're given. So 3 times the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 is 3. And that's this portion right here. And the limit of g of x as x approaches negative 1 is 4. So we can replace that with the given information here. And now we got 9 plus 2, and that would be 11. 1.3 one-sided limits. What is the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0? Now, if we just give this a quick visualization, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. That would be our non-permissible value. And we also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And then this function fits in here and here. And we can see that coming from the left and coming from the right, we don't approach the same limiting value. And so this limit does not exist. What if we're just concerned with the behavior of the function as it approaches from one side or the other? We call these one-sided limits, and we'll write them like this. If we want to approach from the left, then we put a negative in the exponent position here. So this is the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the left. Negative meaning because the negative uh, side of the Cartesian plane is on the left, but it might not be in the negative territory. That's okay. That's the symbol we use. Now, it is just negative infinity here, and therefore it does not exist. And the other one here, approaching from the right, put a positive symbol here in the exponent position. That goes off to positive infinity, and therefore it does not exist either, but at least we have some more information here. In order for the overall limit to exist, both one-sided limits must be equal. And before we just said, uh, coming from either side, they both need to approach the same value, but now we can call them what they are, one-sided limits. So for the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 to exist, the left limit here has to equal the right limit. And in this case, they don't, and so the overall limit does not exist. Find both the one-sided limits and the overall limit as x approaches 0. So for the first one here, we've got y equals the square root of x. Just giving it a quick sketch, it looks like this. 
Now that means that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, well, there's nothing over here. There's no way we can approach from the left. So this does not exist because the graph just does not exist there. Let's do the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And coming down here from the right, getting closer and closer to 0, I'm getting closer and closer to 0. So that would be 0. And the overall limit does not exist because these two are not the same. y equals the absolute value of x. Let's give that a quick sketch. It has a vertex at the origin like this. So the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, coming from the left down, 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 we get closer and closer to 0. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right is also 0. Get closer and closer to 0 that way. And so the overall limit does exist in this case, and it is 0. Discontinuities. Now we talked about discontinuities before. In 30-1 we had um, asymptotes, vertical asymptotes were discontinuities, and also points of discontinuity. Um, now we have a definition for what is continuous. So f, function f, is continuous at a number c if the limit as x approaches c of that function is equal to the value of the function at c. Now that looks kind of confusing, but as we uh, look through some examples, this will make perfect sense. So if the limit fails to exist, or it exists, but it's not equal to f, of f at c, then we say that it is discontinuous. So here's an example. This is continuous because the limit from both sides here goes right to the actual value of the function. This one's discontinuous because the limit coming from either side here goes to this open circle. So that would be the limit, but the actual value of this function happened to be way up here. So this one's discontinuous. Same with this one. This one, the limit coming from the one side or the limit coming from the other side just doesn't exist, so therefore it is discontinuous. Now, a simpler definition for discontinuous is if we have to lift our pencil off the page to draw this, then it's discontinuous. If we can draw it straight through with, without lifting our pencil, it is continuous. Let's find the limits for this piecewise function. Now, if x is less than or equal to 1, then our function is the absolute value of x. So I'll just make this 1 right here. And then absolute value is this V shape with a vertex at the origin here. And it is equal. So I'm going to end it with a closed circle. And this side, I'm going to put an arrow on it. After that, if x is greater than 1, then we've got this uh, parabola that opens down. Its vertex would have been at the origin, except um, we don't uh, have x equals 0 included. So the first point that we're going to see is about here at 1, negative 1. And I've got to put an open circle because we don't actually have that point. The next point would be, uh, what, 2, 2, 3, 4. So something, something down there. So this is heading down like that. So that's how f of x looks. And f of x, it's, it's both of these things. So I'll just call this f of x. And so this is my x and my y. OK, so let's look at the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left. So we're coming up to x equals 1 from the left. And looks like we get to here. And that would be, well, positive 1. Now, the limit of f of x is x approaches 1 from the right. So we come to x equals 1 from the right, and looks like we get infinitely close to negative 1. See, it, it's not actually equal to negative 1, but that doesn't matter. Limits are when we get infinitely close to negative 1. And the overall limit as x approaches 1, well, that does not exist because the two one-sided limits 
do not equal. Let's find the limits for this piecewise function. When x is less than 0, our function just equals 4. All right, so let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this would be just straight 4 here. And open circle because we're not equal to 0 here. So I'm going to end that with the open circle. And I'll put an arrow on here because it keeps going on. At x equals 0, the function equals 2. So I'm going to put a closed circle here at um, 2. And then when x is greater than 0, we've got this parabola. It opens up and it's shifted down two units. So 1, 2. It's going to start about here with an open circle. And then up 1 over 1, over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, kind of like this. Okay, so now that we have a sketch of it, let's check out our limits. We want the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 from the left. So that would be coming to x equals 0 from the left here, and we're going to get infinitely, infinitely close to 4. The limit of g of x as x approaches 0 from the right. So here's we're following g of x, we're following g of x from the right, getting closer and closer to 0, and looks like we're going to get infinitely close to this negative 2. Now the overall limit here, it doesn't exist because our two one-sided limits do not, do not equal, and the actual value of the function at 0 is right there, or from here, 2. For the last example, we've got the great graph here to work off. This is all h of x. We're not given the equation this time, just working from the graph. Let's try all of these questions. The limit of h of x, as x approaches negative 3 from the left, Here's negative 3, approaching it from the left gives us 2. The limit of h of x as x approaches negative 3 from the right. So I'd be coming up this way, coming from the right side, and we get closer and closer to 0. The overall limit of h of x as x approaches negative 3, we look at both of these, or we can look at the graph, and yeah, these don't go to the same place. And these aren't equal, so this does not exist. And the actual value of the function at negative 3, and that would be 1. The limit of h of x as x approaches 0 from the left, so that would be coming down here. Ah, it's negative 3. How about coming from the right? And that would be 1. And the overall limit of h of x as x approaches 0, well, these two are not equal, so this does not exist. And the actual value of h at 0, and that would be this one here, 1. And then we go all the way over here. The limit of h of x as x approaches 3 from the left, so that would be there's 3, and coming from the left, looks like we're at negative 2. The limit of h of x as x approaches 3 from the right, on be this side, and that goes closer and closer to 1. And the limit of h of x as x approaches 3, well, that does not exist because those two one-sided limits are not equal, and the actual value of the function at 3 would be this one here. From this lesson, you should be able to find one-sided limits from equations or graphs. And you should also know where a function is continuous or discontinuous. There's some questions from the textbook. Give them a try, see if you know what you're doing.